Passion Week through the year in Boston, Massachusetts. We'll read only the gospel. We understand we love. We'll read only the gospel for today, which is taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 12. At that time, the chief priests thought to kill Lazarus also, because many of the Jews, by reason of him, went away and believed in Jesus. And on the next day, a great multitude that was come to the festival day when they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young ass and sat upon it as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh sitting on an ass's colt. These things his disciples did not know at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written of him, and that they did these things to him. The Mosul therefore gave testimony which was with him when he called Lazarus out of the grave, and raised him from the dead. For which reason also the people came to meet him, because they heard that he had done this miracle. <coughs> the Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Do you see that we prevail nothing? Behold, the whole world has gone after him. Now there were certain Gentiles among them who came up to adore on the festival day. These therefore came to Philip, who was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and, and desired him, saying, <coughs> Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and, and telleth Andrew. Again Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, Unless the grain of wheat falling into the ground die, it remaineth itself alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world keepeth it unto life eternal. If any man minister me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also shall my minister be. If any man minister to me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. Father, glorify thy name. A voice therefore came from heaven, and I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The multitude therefore said, that stood and heard, said that it thundered. Others said, an angel spoke to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of the world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And, if, and I, if I be lifted up upon from the earth, will draw all things to myself. Now this he said, signifying what death he should die. Moses answered him, We have heard out, out of the law that Christ abideth forever. And how sayest thou the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus therefore said to them, Yet a little while, the light is among you. Walk whilst you have the light, that the darkness overtake you not. When he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. Whilst you have the light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things Jesus spoke, and he went away and hid himself from them. That's one of the words of today's Father, Son, and Ghost, Amen. On this Saturday before Palm Sunday, a few considerations for our Lord on His way into Jerusalem. In fact, this Gospel of St. John chapter 12, and that uh, can be considered as a summary of the next few years that are going to occur. They're going to be, just as our, our Lord Jesus Christ was denied and crucified, so his mystical body must also be denied and crucified. But just as our Lord showed his great power and glory before men, before he was crucified, so our Lord will also show his great glory and power before men, before the church is finally crucified. We look like we're in the time right now, in 2021, that the church is near its crucifixion. 
or already experiencing it. But in fact, it is not yet. We are in the time before that crucifixion. We are in the time when the people have turned away from God, but God will show his great power by the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. There will be a great miracle, like the miracle of the raising of Lazarus. The Jews were going to kill Christ. The, the apostles were afraid to go to Jerusalem. And St. Thomas said, well, let us go and let us die with him. They thought that they would arrive in Jerusalem, that they would be put to death. But instead, when they arrived, Lazarus was risen from the dead after four days being dead. And because of this great miracle, thousands and thousands, in fact, 100,000 people came out to see Jesus Christ. And they cast palms before his feet. And the, the Jews, the Pharisees and Sadducees were extremely worried. They said, indeed, the whole world is going after this man. What can we do? We can prevail nothing. And this is going to happen when the Blessed Virgin Mary finally has her request fulfilled by the Pope. There will be a great conversion to God, and they will say, Hosanna to the Son of David, just as they did 2,000 years ago on Palm Sunday. And all the people will come out and praise him, and especially the children, the innocent ones, shall praise him. There shall be a great victory of the church, just like there was a great victory of Christ. During this victory, what is Jesus Christ going to say? So we are now on Palm Sunday, and our Lord says to all the crowd, If the Son of Man, I shall be glorified. And then a voice came from heaven. It's the second time a great voice came from heaven. The first time was at the baptism in the Jordan, three years and a half before. Now the second time a great voice comes from heaven. It says, Thou shalt be glorified. And thou shalt be glorified again. And so there was, there was a glorification, and there shall be a second glorification. This is going to happen to our holy church. And then, they, then he's, and all the people are praising him. Our Lord Jesus Christ says in the midst of this praise, And I, if I shall be lifted up, which means to be crucified, I shall draw all things to myself. And then they said to him, What kind of Christ is this who is going to be crucified? What kind of Christ is this? And then our Lord said to them, Walk while thou hast the light. While thou hast the light, you can walk. But the light is going to go away. And later in that day, he hides himself and goes out and hid himself from them. And he did not only hide himself from the wicked ones, he also hid himself from the good ones, so that there might be a test. Those that have the faith will believe in his word, even though he has hid himself. And those that do not, they shall be made blind, and they shall not know the truth. And remember, it was only six days between Palm Sunday and Good Friday. Three and a half years of preparation for the crucifixion on the part of Caiaphas. Then Christ showed his great victory and his great power to have himself glorified publicly before all men on Palm Sunday. And then only a few days later, he is crucified. So the same thing must happen again in the history of the church. One of the great errors of the Protestants and many Catholics of our times is that they believe we are now in the time of the Antichrist. We are not in the time of the Antichrist. We are in the time just before Palm Sunday. We are in the time just before the glorification of the church. And then our Lord then said, Fear not. And then afterwards there shall be a brief glory of the church. Uh, 25 years of good harvest is what Our Lady of La Salette says. And then after this brief period of glory of the church, there shall be another collapse, and then Christ shall be crucified. Just like it happened 2,000 years ago. And that shall be the time of the Antichrist. This is not the time of the Antichrist. It's the time before the victory of Mary. But during this time, consider what the apostles thought. They were terrified when they went into Jerusalem. Also remember that they went to Jerusalem by a secret way. The other times they went to Jerusalem, they went in openly. And Christ came in this time by a secret way. 
he came in quietly into Jerusalem because the people were going to kill him. But then when he arrived, he had changed everything. The apostles thought they were going to die. So likewise in our times, there are many apostles, many prophets of our times, who believe that we are heading to death. Hence they repeat the words of St. Thomas the Apostle when he said to the other apostles, Let us go and let us die with him. That is what is being said. However, today of consideration of the donkey, he is also one of the important members of the church at our times. So in any case, our Lord says as he goes to Jerusalem, Fear not, ye people of Jerusalem, ye daughter of Jerusalem, because the Lord comes in on the colt of an ass. He comes in on a donkey's back. And where wise words were written a few years ago, a hundred years ago, or a little less than that, in a poem of G.K. Chesterton, where he said, where fishes, when, when fishes flew in forest walk, and figs grew upon the thorn, one moment when the moon was blood, then surely I was born. With monstrous head and sickening cry, and ears like errant wings, the devil's mocking parody upon all four-footed things, the tattered outlaw of the earth of ancient crooked, crooked will, starve, scourge, deride me, I am dumb, I keep my secret still. Fools, for I have also had mine hour, one long, fierce hour and sweet. There was a shout about my ears and palms before my feet. These are the words of Jesus Testament referring to the donkey on Easter, on, on Palm Sunday. And a long time ago, when fishes flew in forest walk, there was a donkey that went into Jerusalem, and he had one long, fierce hour and sweet. It was wonderful, because on that day, people threw palms in front of his feet. On that day, they praised him and said how wonderful he was. And it was a most wonderful day. He was the most special of all donkeys. But then Monday came. And he was just another donkey. His day of glory was only brief. And he was forgotten from then on. Why was he glorified? That donkey was glorified. And all donkeys since then have a cross on their back. That donkey was glorified. Because he carried Jesus Christ on his back. And the next day, when the donkey was by himself, he was just another donkey. And hence he says to the, to the proud men of our age, and the proud men of all age, Fools, I have also had mine hour, long, fierce, hour and sweet. There was a shout about mine ears, and palms before my feet. We must understand in this great crisis that the only one that survives and the only reason we are glorified in the Catholic Church and the only reason the priest is glorified and the only reason a baptized Catholic is glorified, the only reason someone who is confirmed is glorified, the only reason we are glorified when we carry Jesus Christ and the Blessed Sacrament inside of us is because Jesus Christ is in us and because Jesus Christ is upon us. One of the great difficulties of the supernatural life, and one of the great temptations of the devil, is to make us believe we are the ones who are great. We are the ones who are worthy of glorification. Because after all, I did all these good things. I did all these great things. Therefore, people glorify me. They think I'm very smart. They think I'm very holy. They think I'm very wonderful in all kinds of ways, and I have glory. But we forget the only glory that comes to a Catholic, the only glory that comes to a priest, the only glory that comes to the baptized and confirmed, but especially the priests and bishops of the church, the only glory that comes is when they carry Christ on their back. We must remember as Catholics that we are simply donkeys. There are two examples given by St. John of what we are. And the first one is, we are like dogs who greeted Tobias when he comes home. The dog went out and wagged his tail 
And Tobias came home, and we saw Tobias. So the St. John says in the very beginning of the chapter, chapter 1, as he says in the beginning that we read in the last gospel, we saw his glory. That's all we are. We are witnesses of the glory of God. We are nothing more than that. Only witnesses. We cannot say that there is great glory inside of us. This is the great temptation. I have been a strong warrior. I have great muscles. I have great intelligence. I have done great things. No, there is only one greatness, and that is God. There is only one goodness, and that is God. Only one truth, and He is Jesus Christ, who is God. Whatever truth is in each of us, whatever good is in each of us, is only carried by us, like the donkey. And if you take the donkey, take Jesus Christ off the back of the donkey, and all you have is just another donkey. And he does not have any glory in himself. Now the Catholic Church is experiencing this right now. The whole Roman Catholic Church is like a donkey that has cast Jesus Christ off its back. We cast Jesus Christ off our back at the heresies and wickedness and evil of Vatican II. We cast Jesus Christ off our back when our Catholic families stopped having children. We cast Jesus Christ off our back when we stopped saying the rosary in the home. And we stopped living like Catholics. And we stopped holding our faith publicly in, in, in front of men. Then we stopped carrying Jesus Christ on our backs. But we still wanted to be glorified. Modern man still wants human dignity. He wants to be glorified in his human dignity. There is no human dignity without Jesus Christ. St. Gregory the Great points this out in his sermon on Christmas. O Christian, know thy dignity. That's St. Gregory the Great's Christmas sermon. O Christian, know thy dignity, for thou hast dignity because Jesus Christ has become a man. Because God has entered human flesh. Take God out of human flesh. Take Jesus Christ away from his humanity. And man no longer has any dignity. He is just like the other animals. There is nothing special in him. He's just an animal. And what happens when Jesus Christ is taken out of our culture? We become more and more animals. We simply follow instincts. We simply follow passions. We're simply filled with lust and with violence and with greed and with all the wicked seven equal desires of the seven capital sins. That's all we are. But when Jesus Christ comes in and when our Lord Jesus Christ sits upon our back, then there is glory and then there is hope and then there is goodness. We must remember that all goodness comes only from our Lord being upon our backs. All glory is only because of Him. Our Lord, said, our Lord also said, <clears throat> he prophesied, In our times, fear not, ye children of the 21st century, the children that are going to be in the century of the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Fear not, ye children of the 21st century, because the Lord comes sitting upon the colt of an ass. He sits on a donkey. Now this donkey was never ridden on before. Here the fathers of the church tell us that the donkey, of course, represents especially the priest. He represents, of course, all Catholics in a certain way, but especially the priest. And what does it say? When Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem, he rode on the colt of an ass. He rode on a young donkey that had never been ridden on before. Our Lord Jesus Christ wants young men to go to the seminary. One of the great wickednesses of our times is that it is, a, it is considered wisdom in our day to tell a young boy, you don't go to the seminary. You need to first get experience with women. You need to first get experience with greed. You need to first get experience with all seven capital sins. You need to live in mortal sin. You need to learn to think like the world. You need to get experience in business. And then after you've gotten experience in business and experience in the world, then go and follow our Lord Jesus Christ. But it says in the Code of Canon Law, 1917, that one of the first duties of the priest is to take young men before they are corrupted by the world, while they are still the cult of an ass, that they have not been ridden on by the cares and wickedness of the world. Let them be pure, and then let them be ridden on by Christ then, 
Let them come to the religious life. Let them come to the seminary. Let them be trained in Christ. And let them carry Christ all the days of their life. And let them not carry anything else. And then glory shall be given in their presence. But the glory that is given by people to priests, I know many priests, well, some priests, not many, but some priests, unfortunately, have known they've left the priesthood. And many of them told me, I have friends. I've got friends in the outside world. People like me. People respect me. And when I go out in the world, I'll be able to do great things. But they forgot. People don't like them. People don't respect them. They like their cassock. They respect their priesthood. They like the fact that they are representatives of Jesus Christ and they are carriers of Christ. And then when they take off the cassock and they take Jesus Christ off their backs and they come in and say, here I am. They try it out. They're just another ass. And there are asses all over the world. And these are therefore not to be treated with any respect they are to be, in fact, like unto the salt that has lost its savior. What does our Lord say about the salt that lost its savor? It is good for nothing except to be trodden on by men. Guess what's happening to the Catholic priest in 2020. And now 2021, he's being trodden on by men. The priests don't dress like priests. The priests don't think like priests. The priests don't celebrate the Mass in which Jesus Christ rides in his faith and his truth, the true, the true presence, the true sacrifice. They don't teach the true doctrine. And what is happening? The world is despising the Catholic priests. The world is rejecting the Catholic priests. And the Catholic priest no longer has honor. He no longer has respect. And the reason is quite simple. It's because the modern Catholic priests especially since Vatican II, no longer carries Jesus Christ upon his back. And young men who try to go to the seminary, they tell them first, go out in the world to get experience, and then come. This is against the wisdom of God, the wisdom of the church. There are always some exceptions. Some old men come to the seminary and they are allowed to be ordained priests. But God wants the young man to give himself to God. He wants a young girl to give herself to the convent. He doesn't want the 90-year-old. He doesn't want the 90-year-old guy and the 90-year-old girl. He wants the young one to come and give their whole life to him. And everyone can come to him at any time. But the ones he chooses especially are those that come at their youth. Hence, fear not, ye children of Jerusalem, for the Son of Man is going to ride upon the colt of an ass, a new colt. There shall be priests in this modern age in which the Blessed Virgin Mary shall have her victory. There shall be priests to baptize these people that are going to convert to the faith. There shall be priests who will carry Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. And they shall not be experienced. And they shall not be wise. They shall not be trained in the ways of the world. They shall be never ridden upon. And these unwise, untrained, and foolish young men, whom God is going to call in the very near future to his holy church, to bring about the, the apostles of Jesus and Mary and the great victory that is soon to come upon us, they will be simple fools, and no one will be bothered. Why do you listen to a priest? You don't listen to him because he's smart. He doesn't listen to him because he read nice books and because he has St. Thomas memorized very well and he knows canon law better than anyone else. He is listened to because he's a representative of God, because he has grace poured inside of him, because he speaks with the mouth of God when he says, Hoc est enim carpus meum. He speaks with the power of God because God rides in him and upon him. And if God goes out from him, he's just another useless man. Except he's much more useless. At least a regular man can raise a family. A regular man can do many good things. But a priest that has lost his savor is absolutely worthless. Once we are a cult that carried Jesus Christ upon our back, when we were very young, we are good for nothing else. 
We cannot be used for anything else. Fear not, ye children of Jerusalem, because God is going to bring in our times. He will bring young men, who will bring me, but also men that have converted and made themselves as young men, who have returned to themselves in the spirit of a child, so that even if they are physically older, if they come to the spirit of a child, if they take on the spirit of the child, if they become as little children, then they will be able to carry Jesus Christ upon their backs. This is what's needed in our times, and soon it will happen, very soon. But remember, only Jesus Christ is what makes us Catholics worthy of being praised. Only Jesus Christ is what makes our church have been able to do all the wonderful things that it has done over the last 2,000 years and shall continue to do until the end of time. But those that do these things, who carry Jesus Christ upon their backs, they're just donkeys. And we must always remember that we are just donkeys. But that day, 2,000 years ago, that poor foolish donkey, he thought he was great. He thought he was wonderful. And he tried to be very proud amongst his fellow donkeys the next day when he said, I had palms before my feet. I had people singing my praises. You are just a donkey. Shut up. And they had nothing to do with him anymore. He was a useless donkey. So it must not be with us. We must be donkeys that carry Jesus Christ. The priest, of course, is the primary symbolism of the donkey. But the donkey also stands for anyone that's baptized. Anyone that's confirmed. Anyone that speaks supernatural words of faith and truth to his neighbor. Anyone that does good with the supernatural movement of God inside of him. He only does this supernatural good because Jesus Christ rides upon him and within him. And take Jesus Christ out by losing our sanctifying grace. Take Jesus Christ out by losing our faith. And we become worthless donkeys. Let's not become worthless donkeys, but noble ones that recognize that our only goodness and our only privilege and our only greatness is to carry our Lord Jesus Christ upon our back and nothing else. Those who God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.